Good morning, Central Family. Today we're going to continue our study in the characters of some characters of the Old Testament. Today our study is going to look at Ruth. But more than just Ruth, we're going to consider why God preserved this little book. This powerful little book tells the story in only four chapters. It can be easily read in about 30 minutes, I guess, depending upon how fast you read. There are some who believe that this little book was written by an anonymous author, and others who have found good reasons to believe it was written by the prophet Samuel. We cannot know for sure, but Jewish tradition dating back centuries considers Samuel to be the author of this little love story. To appreciate the details of the story, we must have a feel for the full story. The story of Ruth begins with a terrible famine. An Israelite family left Bethlehem and traveled to the pagan land of Moab in search of food. The mother's name was Naomi, and her husband's name was Elimelech. In time, their two sons married Moabite women. But life was bitter for Naomi. Her husband and then her two sons died. After their deaths, Naomi decided to return to Bethlehem. She urged the two younger widows to stay in Moab and find new husbands. Oprah stayed, but Ruth refused to leave Naomi and travel back to Bethlehem with her. Now take your Bible and let's turn to the little book of Ruth in the Old Testament. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 in chapter 1. You follow along with me as I read. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, who went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of their two sons was Malon and Chilon. Epaphrates of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the land of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Oprah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Malon and Chilon also died. So the woman survived her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return to the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Therefore she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. When they arrived back in Bethlehem, they had to beg for food. And Ruth went into the field of a farmer named Boaz to pick up the leftover grain from the harvest. Boaz was so impressed with young Ruth, and he instructed his workers to leave plenty of wheat for her to gather each day. To her delight, Naomi realized that Boaz was a distant relative of her dead husband. This qualified Boaz to be a kinsman redeemer. If Ruth married Boaz, they could legally reclaim the land formerly belonging to Naomi's husband. Now, with that as a background, I want to share with you five reasons why I believe God preserved this little book. First, I believe God preserved the book of Ruth in his word to demonstrate the gospel of grace. We might miss the richness of this truth as we read the story. In the Hebrew culture, Ruth was one of the five scrolls that would be read annually at a festival. Among the other scrolls that were read annually were Esther at the Feast of Purim. 
Ecclesiastes was read at the Feast of the Tabernacles, and then Ruth would be read at the Feast of Weeks, which was also known as Pentecost. It is more than coincidence that the love story of a kinsman redeemer who would win his bride would be read <clears throat> at the Feast of Pentecost. And centuries later, on the day of Pentecost, the kinsman redeemer would initiate the redeeming of his bride as the bride of Christ, and the church is created on this day. It is the work of grace then, and it is much more. The second reason the book of Ruth is preserved by God is to illustrate the love of Christ for his church. The book of Ruth provides the only detailed example in the Bible of a goel, G-O-E-L, a kinsman redeemer. The law of Moses allowed for a near relative or kinsman to marry the widow of a deceased relative in order to provide everything she needed, which included an heir to his estate. It was not just that any man could marry the widow. He had to be a relative of the family. The closest family member had the right of first refusal. Boaz was related to Naomi's husband and could legally redeem Ruth if he chose to do so. As a result, he becomes an illustration of Jesus Christ and his love for the bride, his church. In this, we discover one of the reasons for the incarnation of God the Son. He became a human being, a relative of the human race, now able to redeem the bride, the church. This is why Paul wrote to the Galatians in chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, these words, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law. Also, just as Boaz had to be wealthy enough to buy the estate of Elimelech, our Lord gave us redemption through his blood according to the riches of his grace. We see that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. The legal tender of Boaz was money. The legal tender of our Lord was his life's blood. The third reason the book of Ruth is included by God in his word for us is to defend the lineage of Jesus Christ. The book of Ruth provides a clear line between David and Judah, the line of the coming king. In fact, the last genealogy between David and Jesus Christ provided the link between David and ultimately the Lord Jesus. It is the genealogical table found at the end of Ruth. Ruth's genealogy will be brought over and used by both Matthew and Luke in their genealogies of Jesus Christ. The book of Ruth gives Matthew and Luke enough information to prove that Jesus Christ is a descendant of the royal line of David. In the same way, Jesus Christ who married his bride, the church, is not only a member of the priestly line, he is the final high priest. The book of Ruth demonstrates the grace of God. It illustrates the love of Christ for his church, and it defends the lineage of Jesus Christ as a legal descendant of David. The fourth reason for the preservation of this little book is that it proves that godly living can take place in an ungodly culture. This fairy tale that really comes true begins with the word and or now, depending on which translation we read. It is a continuation of the book of Judges. Notice that Ruth chapter 1 and verse 1 begins, Now it came about in the days when the judges 
ruled or governed. All we have to do is look back to the last verse in the last chapter of the book of Judges. That is chapter 21 and verse 25. And it reads like this. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. This immediately informs us that this beautiful love story of Boaz and Ruth will shine against the troubled, sinful, anything goes society. And the last reason that I believe God has provided the book of Ruth for us is to reveal the providence of God in the smallest details of life. This is a book that reveals that God is the director in the symphony of life. He orchestrates all things to fulfill his purposes. Some of these events make sense to us right now, and some will not make sense for generations. So as the storyline begins, as the curtain prepares to rise, let's take heart, beloved. God happens to be the one writing your story and my story for his glory and for his purposes. The best thing for us to do is to follow God's lead, submit to each stroke of his quill as he crafts your story and mine, and realize that in the end, it will fit with his purposes for your life and my life and ultimately for his glory. That should give us great satisfaction. Our lives seem to become the parchment upon which our sovereign Lord writes his purposes and his plans for us, even down to the very smallest details of life. Let's remember that no failure is final. No fear has to be fatal. We are his story. As I conclude, I want to remind you once again to pray for Brother Steve and Stephanie. They are embarking on a great adventure. God has led them to move forward with this vision that he has given them. They need and deserve and want our prayers. Let me also encourage you to continue to pray for every member of the staff at Central. I've told you before, and I continue to tell you that this staff loves the Lord. They love serving you, the church. They love what they do. And I want to ask you to pray for each member of the staff. And then let me ask you to continue to pray for the church known as Central Baptist Church. In these days of COVID-19, things have changed as to how we minister to people. But there is one thing that has not and will not and must not change, and that is our prayers. Let's pray for each other. Let's continue to lift each other in prayer. God will honor our faithfulness in praying for one another. May you have a good week in the Lord. I hope if you're able, we'll see you Sunday at Central. God bless you.